Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 17 of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. Here is a departure view of one of our, either our scientist or our engineer, I'm not sure which, but we are on our way out, <coughs> away from Kerbin's sphere of influence. In fact, we'll go ahead and time warp out there. Once we're clear of Kerbin, such as now, boop, clear of Kerbin, we need to plan a maneuver, um, a course correction to actually reach Duna. So, <clears throat> according to this, we will be reaching Duna quite late. Oh, actually that's not bad. So there we're reaching Duna a little bit late. What that tells me though is that this maneuver, if I want to reach Duna earlier, oh, I need to do some magic. What happens if we move our maneuver directly on top of the descending node? Wow, we get really close. Okay, so that's where our maneuver is going to be. We're planning our approach to, uh, to Duna here, so we're going to just tune that up. Get this thing locked in there so I can see it. <coughs> I will add thrust to try and bring this number to the closest approach. Which looks like there at 123. Now, we have a plane change. Wrong way. 184. We're off by a mere 0 0.1 degrees. So we're just going to keep tweaking this until we can minimize that approach vector as much as possible. Okay, that's the minimum there, more or less. I'm going to just tweak these numbers a little bit. Yep, where are we at? 68, 69. So I just keep on giving these things, I'm using my mouse wheel to do this. Just keep on, ah, uh, there you go, do an encounter. So you can see how fidgety, fidgety that is, but basically, if we go this way in a few days, we can meet, we can encounter Duna. So let's get ourselves warped out here. Okay, we have a six minute long burn for this thing. Actually, it doesn't need to be right then. I don't think. <clears throat> we still have Duna set up. Oh. Let's get on top of this descending node before we make our next maneuver here. We're pretty much facing the right direction. Okay. Okay. Here we go. It is going to be a little while before this apoapsis gets out to the height that we need it. But, that's okay. We're baking in a couple of different maneuver parts. We're baking in a um, radial change, and we're baking in a plane change. How's my fuel situation looking on these clusters here? This cluster is the one that goes first. We haven't even expended our first set of fuel tanks yet. I just hope this thing has enough to land on and return from Duna. Because I did not bring an antenna. 
Yeah, chat's gotten a little bit quiet. That's okay. <clears throat> so this burn is to, in to initiate our encounter with Duna. It's going to take a little time for us to do that, but that's okay. Just have to be patient. That's the thing about nuclear engines. Now, I don't have the part, but you can <clears throat> double up on the nu nuclear engines. That has a negative impact on your on the on the amount of delta V you have, which is a measure of how far you can go. Realistically speaking. So I prefer to use one to give my spacecraft the most capabilities. When we actually establish Duna Orbit, we have a whole lot of crazy things to do. Frank is also playing Kerbal Space Program while watching. He's building a, his own spaceship. I think the ship is almost about the same size as the ship. Might might be just a little bit smaller and leaner, but it's similar to the size of the ship that I my very first trip to Jewel was way back in. I, oh God, what version was that? 0 0.9 or 0 0.5 or something? Ooh, Tabby's having sloppy joes, making me envious and hungry. Tabby, actually, I just had most of my chicken cordon bleu and a whole bunch of jalapeno poppers. Uh, before doing episode 16. We're on episode 17 now. The thing about these nuclear engines is they only take liquid fuel. They do not require oxidizer. <clears throat> I wonder if it's meant to be a, fo a form of fusion. Like this engine is a fusion rocket. Yeah, I'm glad I was able to start streaming earlier earlier than I usually do uh, <clears throat> today because that means my international fans can, you know, watch me without having to literally stay up until 5 o'clock in the morning. We are on our way. <clears throat> One step at a time. Just getting this burn done. I think we're pretty much going to be moving this ascending node right on top of the apoapsis, which will also be our Duna encounter. That's the idea, anyway. Bring up some, lock up some factoids here. Leave them up on the display. In the process of trying to get one of our guys uh, who's <coughs> joined up here uh, to get a get a demo to get the demo running on their Linux machine, so they can check it out. So this interplanetary stuff is kind of just about the most complicated thing you're going to do in Kerbal Space Program, but really. If you know how to reach the moon from Kerbin orbit, then you know how to reach another planet from solar orbit. What we happened to do this time was use a little bit of an advanced technique, which is find a, a uh, launch window, which had the appropriate Aduna in a, in a spot such that it would make it a little bit easier for us to reach it without having to burn too much fuel. How's that fuel tank doing? Getting, uh, getting to the point of being cut off. So we're saving this. I'm not. I'm trying not to maneuver with RCS. I want to save that RCS for 
This thing's docking. How's that apple apps just looking? I'm not sure what's going to happen first. Are we going to get the apoapsis in, in line for a Duna encounter? Or is that uh, liquid fuel stage going to run out? The Mercury Transit is coming soon. Is that uh, for Earth to Mercury? Or are you talking um, Kerbin to Moho? That fuel tank is out. Quick save. Make sure I have the right staging set. Goodbye, excess fuel. Back to thrusting. Or excess weight. The quantity of space junk I'm generating. Eh. Now it is saying that we're still showing up late. And our ascending node is 0 0.3 degrees now. So does the ascending node face orbit antinormal? Get that solved. <clears throat> Fix this first. Or, or anti normal. There, we're getting an encounter. Brilliant. We'll just keep going until this encounter minimizes. And then stop and go from there. <clears throat> Mercury transit from Earth on the 9th of May. That's pretty awesome. Almost makes me want to download a copy of Orbiter Spaceflight Simulator and actually um, see about loading up some mods and making that transit. But I'm having too much fun with the Kerbal Space Program right now. <clears throat> yeah, we've got a big old fat encounter with Duna now. seems to think we don't have an encounter, but I think we it's being weird. It's just being weird, man. All right, that feels been barely used. Let's get ourselves reoriented for the traversal. How are we doing? 13 minutes on the episode time. Hopefully we can reach Duna and get ourselves inserted before this episode's done. We are now traversing the space quite far away from Kerbin. In fact, I can't even see Kerbin. To Duna. Yeah, see, it still says we have an account out there. So we're going to go with that. We've got an encounter. Where's the sun? There's the sun. Duna should be out here somewhere. Can't see it yet. There it is.
Okay. <laughs> we are... Oh, look at that orbital plane. Looking tight. Looking tight. There's Duna. There's Ike. We've already orbited both of them at some point. Um, I don't suppose there's any reason to do a crew report, huh? Nope. <clears throat> Everything is about getting on the surface at this point. Do we have a mission to explore Ike? I forgot. Well, anyway, um, the old let's get the periapsis closer to Duna mark uh, move, and we're not going to be doing air breaking through Duna because I don't have any uh, I don't have any heat shield or anything. So we're going to for uh, face radial in. to bring this periapsis to a point that we like and then get ourselves inserted into Duna, into Duna orbit for the second time in this career. Which is more than I did in my last career. <laughs> Having been, been able to, being able to settle down in this live stream uh, recording format makes all the difference. I can live stream and record whenever I want to. Exactly. Yeah, Dragos has got, a, got it on the nose. <laughs> if I went for an arrow breaking maneuver, I would burn up in the atmosphere because I don't have a heat shield of any kind. So we're going to be entering orbit the old-fashioned way, which is to say we'll be using nukes. Now the question is, can we get a gravity assist from uh, Ike? Ike's relatively small, but it could be possible to get a big fat gravity assist from Ike. So I'm going to be looking for that opportunity, actually. We're, we are right on the money on the plane, uh, the plane for Duna. So our periapsis is beginning to bend our orbit as it gets closer. Um, if I remember right, the atmospheric height, height is 50, 000, uh, 50 kilometers, so I'll probably want to aim this for, say, 70? No, 70 is good for Kerbin. Well, yeah, we'll aim for 70. Unless I happen to find an Ike encounter before then. Bring the throttle way down so I can fine tune this. I will aim, God, I'm sweating, for 70. Let me take a look at Duna's. Um, eh. Focus. Boop. There we go. Information about Duna, please. Your atmospheric height is... Fifty kilometers. So if I set that for sixty, <clears throat> that'd be just fine. Now we add a big long burn. Once again, I'll be looking for opportunities to clip o clip over Ike. Doesn't look like we're gonna we're gonna see any though. The big fat burn to bring us into orbit is approximately 4 minutes and 31 seconds long. Let's go ahead and get ourselves oriented now. <clears throat> 
Tabsy's headed off. Thank you uh, for joining. And Drago says, nice stream, by the way. Thank you, Dragos. I really appreciate that. I like it when you guys can participate, have a good time. Whoa. Electrical charge is doing good. Okay, we can go ahead and unlock that RCS. This thing. Here, let's do this. Let's transfer some RCS over there. Because this thing does not need RCS. I don't even know why I have RCS on there. I guess it's just extra RCS storage. Sure, why not? But other than that, we really don't need it. All right. So our maneuver is set for orbital reentry. It's going to be a four minute long burn, which means we need to start it uh, about two minutes, 15 seconds early. Let's go ahead and warp into there. Starting it at 2.15. Four, three, Okay, so here comes our, our burn to establish orbit with Minmus. In five, four, three, two, one, full throttle. Here we go. A nice long burn to get us orbit, uh, orbit uh, to establish orbit around, not Minmus, I keep saying Minmus, around Duna. And that'll be it for episode 17. In episode 18, we <laughs> went to Minmus. We are going to reconfigure the ship and get the landing craft ready for ready for descent. And hopefully, with any luck, reascent. But we don't know if it's going to be capable of doing that or not. And if we find out that it's not, <clears throat> we'll set course for Ike instead. But this thing, I don't know if it has twice as much Delta V as, as the moon, moon version of it did. Um, <clears throat> it has twice as much fuel, but I know that actually a Delta V calculation, it's linear, which means it doesn't mean it's twice as much fuel does de not, definitely does not mean twice as much delta V. But then again, the moon mission had so much fuel left over. I'm hoping that this light craft with this much fuel will be able to make it. We have officially established an orbit around Duna. Now we're trimming it down to a usable or orbit. Periapsis and apoapsis at 61 kilometers, it looks like. It's going to be our parking orbit. How is our fuel situation looking? This, these tanks are next to go. They've got lots. Now, if I had more time during the orbit, what I could do is I could use the main engine to decelerate um, towards a re-entry vector <clears throat> and then pull the ship apart, reconfigure it and let the docking, let the uh, landing vehicle go <clears throat> and then uh, put it back together but I know that I don't have that kind of time. I should quick save. After all this is done.
We're getting there. We are definitely getting there. <laughs> it's 3 a.m. where Harsh is. There's a lot of exciting stuff going on right now. <clears throat> Finger on the X key. Sixty by sixty-three is pretty good. Uh, what I can do if I really want to be picky about it <clears throat> is face uh, orbit in. Let's kill that node and just get these things evened out. Sixty-two by sixty-three retrograde. There we go. Okay, once again, <clears throat> we have established a nice circular orbit around Duna with this ship. If you're watching live, stick around. There's more to come. But if you're watching the episodes, tune definitely tune in the next episode because we are reconfiguring this ship for landing. Uh, the mothership will attach to the fuel cell and this center section will come out on its own. So until then, thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>